Lonzo, did Easy ever ask you about contracts? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said before, he's the one. I took him to my lawyer to get his first contract. <laughs> um, we went to Beverly Hills. I'll never forget. He was shocked as fuck because I walked into my lawyer. This is Eric Wright, Easy E. Uh, he wanted to get some contracts made. And my con- and my lawyer uh, gave, gave him the, uh, says, okay, call him to the secretary. What's the name of the company? Ruthless Records. And she and she said, okay, fine. She came in with a with a uh, with the, with the contract, forty page contract, and he said that'd be six hundred dollars, please. <laughs> and he's like, huh? He said, huh? He said, that'd be <laughs> okay, six hundred dollars. But you just printed, hey, hey, I just printed it. Cause understand this, this my lawyer at the time was a pretty fair dude. He said, what kind of contracts do you want? You want the uh, you want the fair contracts or you want the fuck them contracts? He said, give me the fair contracts. Okay? Give me the fair contracts. And I, that's the only contracts I ever did with fair contracts. Okay? I do. I work out of my house. So I don't need anybody mm-hmm. looking at my ass. Okay? And um, he said, give me the fair contracts. And he, he said, could you print up the so-and-so contract? And he, she did. She brought it, in, brought it into him. And he said, that'd be $600, please. And Easy was shocked. $600? Yeah. Okay. The contract's already been negotiated. You told me what you asked for. I'm giving it to you. It ain't, ain't like you got to make it up then and there. It's already been done. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is a fair contract. This is a fair, and that's one that, and I never saw him again. <laughs> yep. Damn. Kenny Kirk uh, says, "Why you never got Dre to sign to your label?" Dre was signed to me first. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, he probably doesn't know. Contract expired, Doc. That's all. You know, contracts expire. Um, he wasn't in a long-term slave contract. You know, uh, we were signed together for, we had, we had him, I was signed to our production company. And um, it was a year with a, year, with a couple of year options in it. And at the time, I was not in the position to exercise the option. Okay. Keep it in 100. Mm-hmm. You know, my cold ass school was over so bad. My money was tight as, tight as, uh, as what they say. Dick's hat band, okay? Tied his pants on a hole. So um, I had to, I couldn't renew, could renew it. Mm. Let's see, we have a good question here. I think we talked about this probably a couple of years ago. Washington, D.C., if I do recall. Alonzo, you have any good groupie stories? <laughs> you know do I have the city right? Do I have the, what, didn't something happen in Washington, D.C., like with a limo and you popping out and that was- maybe it wasn't Washington. That wasn't a groupie story. That, that oh, was, or some of you got kicked. You got kicked in. What what happened? Go ahead. Um, don't don't even answer my question. Answer their question. The groupie stories, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Here we go. You see, y'all, y'all go. But see, my lady be watching the show. <laughs> watching the show, nigga. You was told me you was. I mean, got caught up in a thirty year old lie messing with y'all or something. <laughs> okay. You know, the women, man, they don't forget shit you tell them. So that's um, hilarious. You know. Yeah. Groupies were group. I guess the groupies we had. Oh, I tell you, guess a groupie story. This is it, this, this is a true story, but it was after Dre them. Well, Dre them. We had a little a little mini split for a while. We had a mini split, and we had uh, I do, do some shows in Texas, and uh, so we out in Texas. The bus broke down. We missed the gig. Everything, and we go to this club and. Uh, we in Texas, and the girls, they announced record crew was in the house. And boy, I was in rare form. Jerry Curl was well greased and shit. <laughs> and was, it was all in cracking. So uh, we go back to the hotel, and just like in, um, in Set Straight Out of Compton, the girl's boyfriend came looking for her. Okay. okay. The girl's boyfriend came looking for her. And the my my wrecking crew substitute we had adjoining rooms okay and i don't know what they was trying to pull they were trying to pull some old hanky panky bullshit but i'm in the room with a young lady and her friends next door but they locking on her door the other guy's door looking for her she comes in my room she butt ass naked okay all right (laughs) She's not going to let me in, let me in, because so-and-so left the front door. So I let her open the door, a girl kicking it with me, and she like, I'm like, oh, she got on the face towel, okay? 
The FaceTime ain't showing me nothing. Yeah. And, uh, so my boys is lying, talking about no, she ain't here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. They didn't come to my room. Okay, they didn't come to my room. And uh, I can't say everything that happened that night, man. But uh, because she came, in, I'm, I'm gonna put it this way: because she came into the room, because her partner was moving kind of slow. Okay, her partner was moving kind of slow, but she finally started to cooperate. I'm gonna put it like that. And she's sitting there watching her partner cooperate. Okay, she's sitting there. I'm in, I'm in, rare, I'm in grandmaster mode. Okay, y'all, <laughs> let your imaginations run because you know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna say it on Facebook. Okay. I'm in, I'm 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 representing Compton, okay? In Texas. <laughs> her partner is laying in the twin bed next to me, looking at me represent Compton, okay? And I'm sitting and I'm trying, I'm looking at her partner. Her partner was fine. Her partner was finer than the one I was kicking it with. Everything was cool. I'm representing Compton real well. The homegirl said, save me some. I wasn't representing Compton no more. <laughs> <laughs> she said, me some. Ah, ah. Why you had to say something? Damn. <laughs> Why you had to say something? I was doing good. So she opened her mouth up, man. And that's the that's a true crazy ass story, Doc. One of them crazy ass. Damn. Man. Yeah. Someone said, uh, and maybe we can end it or wrap it up with this uh this question. Someone says what do you think Easy E would think of the game today? The music game? Man, yeah. I, I don't, you know, it's real hard for most of the players who played the game back in the day to really appreciate the game as as, as evolved into today because we all have to relearn something that we, we learned once already. Okay? It's like if you learn how to do math a third way, it's hard to undo, learn how to do the, the new math the new way, you know? Um, like I told y'all a couple of shows ago, I'm used to going out and making records and doing my labels, and that was part of my fucking day. It wasn't a part of, it wasn't about me looking in front of a computer and punching out some shit and, oh, that's cool, and uploading it, and, you know, it, the, I think part of, the, part of what we enjoyed about the music business was part of the struggle, Okay. Not knowing if it was going to be a hit, going to K Day, not knowing if they was going to play it or not. Okay. Um, and I'm quite sure um, Easy being Easy, he did a lot of what I did, but he didn't do all out what I had to do. I think he he might, I don't know, man. It's going to be hard to understand that because, you know, Easy passed in like 94, 95. Four. Yeah, yeah. So the record business, I don't even think he barely, he barely, he barely, Saw CDs. I mean, they did see CDs, but CDs were still kind of new. And uh, even back then, in '94, to get a CD made, man, was like twenty five hundred dollars to get a thousand CD made, CDs made. So um, today's music, I don't know, man. Um, he, it, it'd be real hard to say because you know you have to understand. You have to understand easy. Easy understood being a character and being a real dude. Mm. And I told this, I told the story the other day to somebody else. A lot of the artists today don't know how to separate being a character from being a real dude. Okay, because of the internet, all the artists today are always on. They're always on stage. They, they right. you know, they can't take off them tattoos. They can't yeah. uncolor their hair. They, you know, uh, Wrecking Crew. Shit, when I came off stage. Aside from my Jerry curl, you couldn't tell I was on stage. I put on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, grab my clothes, and you know that I go back to being Lonzo, okay. And most most artists at that time did, and we all had our stage personas. There we that go. We, yeah, keep that mic closer to you. Huh? Yeah, keep the mic closer to you. We, we always we all had our stage personas that we projected, but we also knew that we still was regular dudes, okay. That we just made music for a living, and that's that's something that a lot of people, um, especially as today's artists, don't separate the two. Okay, um, social media has forced artists to always be in stage mode. Okay, even if it's killing them, you know you don't see guys without their grills in. You don't see them 
without their dreads, you don't see it without their tattoos. Tattoos ain't coming off, okay? Yeah. So it's just, it's a different mindset. Easy could take off his straight jacket and put on his Compton cap and go to the hood, okay? He could do that, okay? Um, Dre didn't, didn't wear penalties and shit around the neighborhood. They wore regular tennis shoes and T-shirts and jeans. But that's the, the, the cube, same thing. All that shit was part of a stage act. It wasn't a part of his his life. And where nowadays artists, everything they do is a part of their life. You know, They're always on social media, always trying to be turned up. And I think that, that could also be, be a reason why so many of them are dying because they never get a chance to really rest, man, and be be regular dudes. Die. They take it too yeah. serious, man. I think uh, maybe they think the fans expect so, so, too much of, so much of them till um, they uh, kind of just don't know how to just not be on stage. 